Welcome back and thanks for sticking with me through this series where I'm trying to create the perfect grid trader. Uh, today I actually have one of the suggestions to implement so we're moving ahead with modifications to the grid trader. The suggestion today isn't one that I necessarily think is in tune with grid trading but I'm sure it's something that a lot of people have been thinking about so I want to cover it off and the suggestion is simply to implement a take profit and stop loss as a way of preventing that large drawdown that we carry through the life of the uh, grid trade. So I won't waste too much time on the introduction, let's get straight into it. I do have a couple of very small changes that I want to make to the base before I move on and implement the changes for take profit and stop loss. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is move this app magic into main and I'm actually going to implement a real magic number, mainly because if you want to use one of these you might actually want to use a magic number that's different to the other versions. So I'm making these changes in the 1.003 before I copy that into the 1.004. And my formula for this magic number is going to be 240501, which is the major version number, 003, the minor version number. I will also copy this and make the couple of or make the change to that number into the other versions that we already have just so that they still compile because I will be changing this grid trader MQ5 and remember this is the same thing that we uh, apply to each of the other versions we simply change this number and it recompiles each version so I need to go back into all the older versions and make this change now so that's the first of the base changes that I want to make the next one is to change the trade comment open main and then open config I'm going to put a global variable in here for the trade comment I'm going to in the on init here I'm going to do So I'm filling the trade comment with the input trade comment plus a space and then the app version. So whatever you put in the trade comment, because that's an input, I'm just going to add the version of the application to that. Then in the leg file, I have open trade here. I'm just going to change that from IMP trade comment to trade comment. All right, that's everything for the uh, general code changes. I'll just close everything except this, open the containing folder and now I want to create a version 1.004. Come back here, change that to a 4, open the document. Those are the necessary changes just to update the version number. I just like to make sure once I've done that, that everything compiles and it still does. Now, if I'm going to have a stop loss and take profit, I need some inputs for those. Don't worry too much about the defaults that I've set here because you can always change those in the input. So then if I open the leg, so now in the leg as well as the level size, I'm going to have a stop loss and a take profit size. Now the one thing that this means is that because I might have a take profit that's greater than the level size, previously when I opened a trade, if the price moved in the direction of that trade, I would reach the point where I've gone one level ahead and then it would close that trade and then restart. I'm not doing that now because I have a take profit which could be greater than that level size, which means I might have several trades open while I'm waiting for the take profit to be hit. So instead of just an entry price and an exit price, I'm going to have a head entry price. So remember, Previously, I could never have the price moving ahead of the leading trade without closing that trade and opening a new one. Now it might open a new one if it reaches the level size but hasn't reached the take profit. So instead of just entry price, I'm going to have a head entry price and tail entry price.
And now also instead of just exit price, I'm going to have a stop loss exit price and a take profit exit price. Now in the constructor, I've got level size and I'm converting points to double for that. I'm going to do the same thing for the stop loss and the take profit. I'll just copy it. Now I also want to allow you to enter a zero for the stop loss and the take profit and then basically have it default to the original behavior. So a stop loss I can handle later. For the take profit, I'm simply going to say that if you've entered a zero as the take profit, I'm going to set it to the same as the level size. Now this won't be exactly the same as the original, but I'll show you that when we get to running the demonstration. Now I have to change these close conditions because this previous condition only closed if we were in profit by a level. Now I need to close if we're in profit by the take profit amount or if we're in loss by the stop loss amount. So what I'm saying here, if the stop loss is greater than zero, so if you have set a stop loss and the current close price is less than the stop loss exit price, or if take profit is greater than zero, which it should always be because I have this line here, if take profit is greater than zero and the price close is greater than or equal to the take profit exit, take profit exit price then I call close all for the price close. I also need to make a change to this opening statement because before this I would only open if the count is equal to zero or the price has fallen behind the tail of the trades. So now if the count is equal to zero, which obviously means I have no trades, so I can start again or the opening price is less than the tail entry price, or the opening price is greater than the head entry price, or greater than or equal to the head entry price, then I will open a trade. Make some changes in the close all. So first I want to get the opening price for the current ticket. So I'm looping through all of the positions here. I get the opening price for that ticket because although this function is called close all, I'm only closing things that are outside the take profit stop loss range. So I just need to know where this trade opened and then I can calculate whether it's in profit or loss. So what I'm saying here, again, this check if stop loss is greater than zero and the same for M take profit greater than zero. So they need to be set. So if there is a stop loss and the current closing price is less than or equal to the opening price minus the stop loss amount. So that means we've fallen behind the stop loss for this particular trade. The same for take profit, but in this case, greater than or equal to, if the price close is greater than or equal to the opening price plus add the take profit amount. And then I just close that trade. No change in the open trade, that's fine. I do need to change the recount though because now I have stop losses and take profit prices. Just initializing the entry prices and the exit prices. This loop doesn't change because I'm just finding the head and the tail price of the grid. But then what I do with those results is a little different. So first thing you'll see, previously the entry price was just the tail minus the level size, but now I can be entering trades ahead of the head of the grid if the take profit is larger than the level size, so that trade is still open. So now the head entry price is adding the head and the level size. The tail entry price is still subtracting the tail and the level size. Now the 
say profit exit price, I'm adding to the tail, not to the head. So if the take if the price has risen above the take profit amount from even the lowest trade, I at least want to close that trade. I don't want to wait until the take profit reaches the head. So it will just close up the tail of the grid as it goes. The stop loss, I've got this check here again, M stop loss equals zero. And remember that's because the take profit is being set to the grid size if you've entered a zero. But if you enter a zero for the stop loss, then I'm just setting the stop loss exit price to zero. And if not, then I'm setting the stop loss price to the head minus the M stop loss or head subtract stop loss. Remember this is in the direction of the trading. I think that's everything I need. Let's see if I've made any typing errors in here. Obviously made some. That should be comment line. Try again. I miss opening parenthesis there. I think that's and missed the same thing here. That's all good. Let me compile the whole thing. 1.004 compile and that's it now let's go and try the demonstration on this now remember that the base grid trader generated a profit of 5021 and I did say that even if I set the defaults or rather let me go back if I set the stop loss to zero and the take profit to zero this will behave almost exactly the way it did for the original base. So if I set this to zero and zero, then I should get something close to the original, but it won't be exactly the same. And I'll just run it, show the result, and then I'll explain why. And then for the sake of testing this variation to the grid trader, obviously there's an infinite number of combinations of stop loss and take profit points that you could use. I'm not going to try too many of them. What I will try is the stop loss and the take profit at 50 points which is half of the trade gap I'll try them at 100 which is the same as the trade gap but uh, a little different to this with the zero because that means there will be a stop loss and then I'll try it at twice the trade gap and at five times the trade gap just to see what happens and I'll be trying combinations of those I'm not going to make you sit through all of the tests running I'm just going to run those and then I'll present them in a graph but first I'll run this and show the result where the stop loss and take profit are zero. Now that test is finished and we've got a profit now of 5,040, slightly more. The reason for this, in the original version, if I open a trade, let's say it's a buy trade and the price goes up, nothing happens until that trade gets closed and then the expert detects that there are no trades open, so it opens another one. In this version, because I have to allow for a take profit that might be different to the size of the grid, I don't wait for all the trades to be closed. I will open another trade as soon as I reach that grid level above the leading trade. Because of things like spread, that means that I'm reaching the point where I open a new trade before I'm closing the existing trade. So there's this tiny gap there where I'm actually getting two trades open. And so I'm getting a slightly higher profit here. It's not a much, 15 months and this is $20 difference. So it's not a big difference, but there is a small difference just because of the way this is operating. So now I'll go on, as I said, I'll run the tests for different combinations of stop loss and take profit, and then present them in a chart so that you can see how this goes. I'm back and I've run all of those tests. Uh, I've put everything into a little grid here. The stop loss 0, 50, 100, 200 and 1000 and the take profit 0, 50, 200 and 1000. There's no take profit of 100 because according to the code that's the same as entering a zero because it sets to the default value of the grid size. Uh, what we can see, and I didn't fill these in, but all of the iterations with a stop loss of 50 failed, crashed out the account. In fact, everything that had a stop loss resulted in a loss. These numbers are the profit and the drawdown. So all of them resulted in a loss. The drawdowns did reduce as we went up in size of the stop loss, but in general, adding a stop loss has had a negative impact on the grid trader. The take profit 
hovered around the same sort of values, 5,040 with the defaults, 4,992 with a take profit of 50, 4,962 with a profit of, or well, take profit of 200, and 4,963 with a take profit of 1,000. So it seems that it doesn't make too much difference, uh, but certainly adding a stop loss causes losses. And the drawdowns on the take profits, 583, 556, 606, and 756, not too much in there. So I don't think there's a great value in adding a stop loss or a take profit. But as I said a little while back, there are an infinite number of these combinations. Uh, and I haven't even attempted to vary the size of the grid as part of this. There are simply too many things to test. So you might want to try this and see if you can come up with a better combination. But I'm going to just leave this one here. I already have another one of the suggestions under development. So we'll see how that works out. It's quite interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing how the results are from that. And if you have your own suggestions to build on any of these things that we've built, uh, perhaps put combinations together of the different ideas that appear, then leave a comment with the video and I'll do my best to get to them all. So again, thank you for watching and see you next time.